Now then folks, as promised um, to a few people on the Bilingo Peugeot partner site and I like doing my videos as well I've shown you how to fit your diesel heater Get a turret plate, they're easier Turret plate sits over your diesel heater like this You basically cut a big circle into the floor of the boot of the back of the car I'll show you where I'm going to put it you place it over the top of the uh, <coughs> place it over the top of the pipes but as you can see folks look it's covered it can you see holes there and there it's covered in my fuel pipe there so I've got the, the wrong one, so I'm just going to drill an hole from there and pop another hole in there. And that fits over there like that. You screw this or glue it, whatever, onto your floor so it's safe. Then you take your exhaust through that one. Air intake through that one. Fuel goes through this hole here when I've cut it. Big important thing folks, before fitting a diesel heater, you need to set up your fuel line from your fuel tank to your diesel heater. It can't be any longer than two meters. If you go longer than two meters, this little old pump can't cope. So be warned, don't go really, really long with your wires it doesn't need to be too much more than that really what i've already got there um as you can see i've got two diesel eaters due to the government's inefficiency to look after us lesser fortunate citizens i'm fitting one in my house <laughs> i fitted one last year folks three month bill was march april may which were pretty damn cold this year that came to £36. My diesel eater cost £100. Fuel for it cost £40. So this year, whatever I get out of that's free, folks. I'll keep me eating down. So without further ado, um, I'll show you how to fit your control panel in place, everything into place. I'll show you me removing um, certain bits to get to it because you have to if you have a Peugeot partner I'm not sure about Bilingo if you want a diesel eater in the back of your car you must remove your spare tyre um, that's going on the Mark 1 Peugeot partner I've not looked under any of us so let's get on with it folks right folks most important thing to do next is when connecting these pipes up here they're an absolute nightmare if you get the green wire the green pipe get rid go get some I think it's oh I can't remember what size it is google it uh, but they're a nightmare to push in there so what you must get first of all is a steaming hot coffee isn't that right Bob <laughs> and one of these a cup of hot water folks just gently dip it in let it eat up a bit a little bit of a shake you don't want any water in there but I don't think it'll go in right much anyway and I've thrown you on floor and I folks that were nice of me so I'm hoping you can see this let's have a look somewhere down about there so I'll just get it in and now it's a lot lot easier to push up into the pipe what you want to do is try and get it to butt right up to here because you don't want an air bubble between the end of that metal and this here so you can feel it going in folks give it a twist give it a push i suppose best way to do it is work out where that is first and then measure how much you've got to go in Now, feel in the middle of that bit there, that feels really solid. So, sorry if I were out of focus and stuff there, folks. I was just trying to show you. My assistant's gone to the shop and left me alone. <laughs> so, um, what I'll do now is 
I'll wire the whole system up. I'll run it outside before I even put it anywhere near the motor. And that way I know it's running before I put it in. Then all I've got to do is disconnect that pipe, wire it all in, put the diesel heater in place, push the pipe back into place. Simple as that, folks. Right, folks, as this plate don't fit, I put a bit of white softy paper on back. I'm going to press it against this. And that way, I'll know exactly where the hole should be. Takes all the faff out of measuring, get a little rock, yeah, in each hole. And it should leave an indentation, which is just there. That's where I'll drill. Now then, folks, back at it. I've drilled the plate. Um, it now fits. So that's the circle you're going to cut out of your floor. This is what you're going to attach it to your floor inside with. Right, I've now drilled it to the right side where it should be screwed in. Obviously, that other hole, we're not out. These four are for your bolts. Do not, under any circumstances, remove that rubber plate. That stops vibration in your van. Put that on. Pop your screws in. Once your screws are in, folks, you're ready to mount it into the van in the position where you want it. I'll show you where mine's going right now. Right, depending on whether you're putting your box left or right, that... So let me show you out here. No space that side. Tiny bit of space up there that side, can you see it? You might get a turret mount in there, but I reckon it's still too close to your wheel for heat reasons. So you've got to lose this wheel, I'm afraid, folks. And you go under there. Some lovely guy who sold me a car, put it up with clippers, uh, with uh, tie wraps. Lovely, well I'm taking it off. Oh. Consider leaving your cage on, folks, because you might be able to put your air intake hose and your exhaust pipe onto it at a later point. And that's why. <laughs> so, folks, look at all that room up there now. Quite easy, can't you? Anyone need a spare tyre? Not a bad nick. Mm. Yeah, it's not a bad nick that actually. Oh, it's a fate. I think I'll leave that then. Enough life. Enough in my life without fate. Right, so folks, my box runs up there, so that's exactly where I'm coming through, to that point there. So folks, as I said, from underside there, right there, <laughs> where that woolly blanket is, and all my other stuff, yeah, you lose some storage space. But what you gain from it is amazing. So, right here is roughly where it'll sit. As you can see from before, I used to have a different Peugeot partner. The heater goes there like that, folks. It comes out here, look. It's directional. So you can face it wherever you want. I wouldn't advise having a fridge up this end because you'll counter what your fridge is trying to do. So if you do have a diesel heater in and want to keep your fridge, pop your fridge in the front. Now, I've got to clear all this car. Um, I had to uh, 
few bits to do with my solar panel so I'm going to disconnect all the controller and everything as you can see the diesel heater control panels there that's there that's me uh, energy solar panel controller unit guess what we keep kicking the wires here so I'm moving it round the front where my battery is and then that way there's less chance of me kicking the living daylights out of them and knocking them out all the time once your turret plate's in position folks this is really hard to get in here for the bottom pipe it must be tight it's fuel pipe get a mini socket and it'll do it well and I should I should be able to pick it up by the rubber tube there you go that'll do so now that we've had that on um, we're not going to fix this yet because this has to come through the length of the van and it must go out of the floor before the diesel eater then round back in into your diesel eater so there's no point hooking that up yet folks right folks air intake exhaust fitted you can leave them on because they'll go through the big hole like I say there's a fuel pipe that needs to come back through the floor before it goes into that so I'll show you in a minute right biggest step next strip the van cut an hole out for this we need a secret weapon right folks to cut that floor get yourself some nice steel new blades yeah if you're using last year's and you're placing it again put new clips on old ones don't last yeah uh, where's that secret weapon gone it's around here somewhere there it is folks that's your secret weapon what you do is you have a few bevies and if it all goes tits up it doesn't matter <laughs> let's get on with it right folks what we'll do is drop an all in here cut the all out this is why I decide her because this is heartbreaking folks there we go so just big enough to get the uh, drill bit in blade in even jigsaw blade folks as you can see just drop a little all in take your circle out sit your uh, diesel heater into place check it's looking good yeah um what you can do is rather than sealing the top of it you go underneath and seal because we've got a warped floor like a ridged floor and you don't want to be sealing against that really because you can't get your hands under that little plate there where the turret mount is so you're best going from the other side from underneath to seal it folks so let's get the blade going there you go my chickens I told you one can of beer well sorted <laughs> <laughs> bit daunting look that's what you end up with yeah scrap man can have it I'll show you under here folks yeah right folks so that's underneath so now all I need to do is wire it all up put all the fuel on other stuff so <sighs> exhaust there put that cage back up a minute so I can show you so exhaust comes here I bring it out this way so it comes out the outside of this exhaust and then I put my air intake just about here so it's nowhere near the exhaust output um, oh we've got a bit of a gap don't matter folks right don't panic most of it's secure and, and sorted that little bit where I went wonky there that'll all be filled up with putty I'm not selling my car ever, it's mine, I love it, and I'm having a diesel eater. So if you're not scared folks, give it a go, if you are scared, get a professional to do it, charge you about 900 quid. So as you've just seen underneath, there's mounting points here, here, here and here. Um, you get some little screws with them, you need to drop a pile of oil in first because the screws don't go through. But once you get the pile of oil in place, they do go through easy, so yeah next stage get that done wire up 
I'll show you how we do that next. Don't forget to cut your carpet out, folks, before you wire it up. Okay. Great, folks, we're getting there. So we've got the screws in. Um, I'm thinking about replacing that one and that one with a long one because they ain't long enough. Let's go underneath. Right then, folks. I'm hoping you can see right in here. So, exhaust here. Petrol pipe here, exhaust. The petrol pipe must come round this side. If it goes round that side, it's got a good chance of being melted on your exhaust pipe. So, pay attention, folks. That goes round the back of the air filter. Probably fruit floor about there. Back to the diesel eater. Or, alternatively, what you can do is you can plumb straight into the petrol tank, which is just there, that flat side there, I reckon you get a screw fitting on it. Um, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to stick on old kerosene because it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go, diesel eater installed. Warning, folks, be careful how close you get to that side because if you get any closer than that you're gonna have major trouble because that's all your supporting beams and stuff um, so I may suggest that you either put it central or maybe a little bit further to your left here you check it out and you decide what you need to do I could have done with coming forward and possibly having that bit just there so maybe in centre warning again when using your diesel eater, you will lose all of that storage area. You cannot put anything in there. So just be warned, yeah? Right, round the side. My diesel feed comes from here. My tank will screw in. There's one screw hole there, which you can already see. You see me old screws and it to take them out put another baton across there yeah then I can screw top and two and that way the diesel tank the 10 litre one sits perfect in that tiny little gap that should be the one that you get with your kit I have a diesel tank but I don't want to put it onto my diesel tank it's just too expensive is diesel at the moment these run on heating oil go saw some folks um, so next job wiring install the uh, heating oil tank paraffin tank diesel tank whatever you want to put in it not petrol uh, and then what I'll do is I'll wire all up I'll prime all the pumps so it comes all the way through here I'll see it going all the way down the other end of there. This bit here that goes the other end needs to go back through the floor and back into your diesel eater from underneath. So that bit needs to be long enough, yeah? Make sure you get that right, folks. Remember, diesel pipe fuel feed system needs to be no longer than two meters long, folks. Right, let's get on with electrics. Right folks, carrying on, um, like you know the pipes in place, I've now put the diesel heater feed because my pump, which is behind me somewhere, fastens onto that, oh that side there, and it just hangs because if you fasten them on tight folks, they seem to click and bang a lot, so I fasten mine to that, do how you please. Um, my diesel tank fits on this piece of wood which if I come round here it sits just in this doorway bit here it's perfect battery there so I'm thinking about putting a board across there just to keep that separate yeah that'll be storage then 
like I say here, I've got my split charger, my solar panel, um, and other bits, 12 volt to go out of there. So, um, when you're fitting your diesel heater together, they're really self explanatory because you can't clip them wrong. Um, they all have different shapes. Square goes to your pump, triangle goes to your control panel, um, and this one right down here as well that's where your wires are coming from from your loom at this side which goes all the way underneath i need longer bolts folks um but yeah i'm getting there what i've also done folks is i've checked the whole seat belt system out i know there's you can see a line there but you're not going to say that when my bed's there are you so that'll be lovely <laughs> um so yeah i've done all that side there now folks covered up this little bit here and this is so awkward this bit so what i did was i just got a bit of extra wadding and made sure i covered up all the gaps but i think that's pretty neat i'll be doing other side after i've plumbed in this diesel later so now i'm going to put in the pump and work out how long wires i need and stuff um don't use the green pipe folks it bulges get some of that nylon there you go folks uh, that's ready to be screwed onto here this pattern which will then sit in this gap at doorway I've done it before so I know it fits um, screw it at three points one two three to get this spout out of this end folks I don't know if you've seen the videos but you basically put a wire inside yeah long wire right out at the top put it through this tie a knot on it pull it all the way back through and yank it and it brings that out then you can put your knot on the outside and seal it well yeah that's how you do that there are videos online if you don't know what i'm going on about because sometimes i don't <laughs> but uh, that's your diesel tank that's here you know where it's located electrics that way control panels there so it's going to be on that side you'll see it in a bit pipe comes down here it'll go round the back of that and it'll be clipped up here yeah so this pump here will be positioned something like that so it what is it um because it needs to be a little bit up and at an angle if you have a look online it will tell you what angle it needs to be at so then we come round here there's your fuel feed to your what is it and if i just lift it up a little bit you might be able to see that there's a grommet there pipe straight through floor pipe goes under it so there you go folks there's your grommet it comes out of there round back of that yeah because if you go around the back of it there's no chance you're getting it near that pipe and it goes yeah, I can get it in my fingers the guys right in there can you see that no you can't in there folks just in there it's easy uh, if you've got a turret mount on you will need a tiny ratchet to tighten up or a tiny 10 mil spanner or whatever it is 8 mil but that's how it goes on folks right folks there we are all wired up so this is just where the fan runs so don't worry about your fuel pipe coming this way wires go under here down the carpet if you can see i don't know let's stick you in so if you can see yeah um down here fuel pump it's notoriously noisy so if you're getting a lot of clicking noise either put it underneath your van or hang it like that because it stops the vibration as much um i don't mind the clicking actually i had one in last year and it didn't bother me so all that's in there now folks if we come round here diesel tank sits there that goes up a touch yeah to the uh, 
to the pump. The pump runs basically that way. There you go. Um, I'm hoping I've got enough to pull it over hill. I'll be at a check because if this don't fill up, I'll drop that a little bit. So it's a little bit of a lower angle, so the fuel goes in a bit better. Um, these are my anchor points for my bed. So they need to go back in. Oh, that went in easy, bloody hell. That's <laughs> unusual. This one goes up here. Like a kind of sort over that one. I intend to put a separator across here. And then that's my storage. Wires go down there. I'll put another hook in this side to keep them nice and trim and tidy. Power wires come through here. Uh, they'll go around the side there on the diesel tank onto my battery. And job's a good one. Right, let's get on with bleeding it through. Right, folks, to fuel up, I've got a funnel for it. A big one. <laughs> So it doesn't splash all over because it normally splashes all over. I'll show you it in a minute when I filled it up. Filled it with some old red that I had and uh, it's got kerosene in it now. Uh, heating oil. So what you've got to do now is wire up, prime your pump. You'll see it go through um, and you'll see it working. I'll show you that next. Right folks, uh, so everything's ready, it needs priming like I said. So to prime it on this control panel, you press them two down, and it says H off, press it up, and it's on. Do you see the little green pump light come on? And if you can listen carefully. In fact, let's go around to the box and show you real quick. And I'll follow it through. There you go. Can you hear it pumping? So it's coming from here. It's sucking it up. Put a cup. Oh no, it ain't. Put a cup. Oh it is, yeah, yeah, I can see it going in. It's taking its time, I think. There we go, a little bit of fuel coming through. Now what you need to do here, folks, is make sure there's no air bubbles, yeah? So it'll keep ticking away, slowly filling up. As you can see, we're getting a bit more. While we're waiting for that folks, like I said, remember to put three screws in this because this weighs quite a bit with 10 litres of fluid in it. Uh, we're about a third of the way up that so far. It'll slowly bring it all the way down the length of the car and then into the diesel litre underneath. And we'll come back when it's uh, priming underneath, yeah? Alright folks, as you can see it's getting up to the top of that and uh, as it gets to the top it probably will cut out so you need to go around press off and then on again and it'll prime again Let's see you underneath in a minute But like I say, get them air bubbles out folks, right out Like that Right up to the top, central as possible, and it should take the whole bubble out. There, it's gone. It's going up there now. I can just see it coming through the pipe. Let's go underneath. Right, folks, you can see diesel coming through now. All the air is pushing through. 
should be no more air after these last couple of bubbles now that should be nearly underneath by now and into diesel heater and I'll go stop it to stop it press off right so uh, right back onto the time right now should be able to fire it up should we get a go so there you go it says on and it's showing that the uh, heater plug is warming up the fans moving the electrics on it's slowly getting ready or putting the heat on right you can see fan running there if you put your hand here where uh, the air is going to come out of you should be able to feel it I can just hear the diesel heater kicking up now actually shall we go underneath it sounds a bit loud underneath there you go there's the exhaust I should get some old smoky dokey out of that in a minute and like I say He's later fitted, folks. Now I can hear the pumps kicked in. It's allowed the fuel through now, it's reached temperature. So I can feel a bit of heat coming out of here. coming out of there well now folks oops head I can now feel the heat coming out of there yeehaw Happy days folks, so like I say these are directional, stick it wherever you want By uh, going on to this here, it should let you um, put the temperature up It's at 10 degrees C, lowest is 8, which is what I use for the van because it's bloody ideal uh, as you can see, one, two, three, so it's 60%, no, it's nearly two thirds ready to the heat, you can really hear the heat coming out now, and yeah, it's quite lovely actually folks, you can't go wrong with this in winter, and you can if you choose, bang the heat up. If you want to folks, you can bang the heat right up to thirty-five degrees if you want to feel like you're in Bahamas. <laughs> you roast your head off, don't bother. Keep it low. Save your fuel. Right, as you can see now we're up on nearly the last bar, so it's it's nearly reaching um, ideal compression temperature which means the uh, glow plug should be out now which it is cracking folks absolutely cracking it's fucking lovely Now it's reached temperature folks, so this is what you get while you're sat in your van. Just a gentle blowing noise, tiny clicking in the background. If you don't like it, get a different heater. 
or put your clicky pump underneath. But yeah, folks, that's it. Diesel heater in. Cracking, eh? Lovely. Smashing. Super great. See you on the next adventure.